Hi, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Good evening. Um, tonight, I'm going to uh, put a lot of things in the basket. I hope you can follow me because it comes from different direction. Language actually forms a 360 degrees, you know, and it spreads out to different direction. So I cannot uh, make a straight line etymology for you, but I will explain a little bit tonight about um, the importance of fringes and tassels in our life in, in in real life I mean and then uh, why we carry it you know in different cultures and, and what is the connection of it you know to the belief that we follow you know the lineage and I will start uh, my slides now okay here we are Here it starts. Okay, first of all, I will uh, show you this slide again, the picture of basket starfish, and uh, you will see that we all share one common core, and um, the so-called family trees are not really trees. They should be looked at just as branches from the same core. So, uh, because whenever you believe that uh, we have each own a separate tree family, then you usher in human hierarchy. That's why I think this way uh, we need to be changed. We need to look at it as uh, what you see in the basket starfish, you know, from a single core that branches out. We are all on standing on equal historic ground, okay? And um, again, the sound of this uh, research is based on Cantonese, which is a very ancient Southern Chinese dialect. And uh, I compare the sound with a lot of different uh, so-called family, language family, you will hear this very, very similar sound. First of all, I am going to um, continue uh, with the first slide. Uh, it's about the remnants of the matriarchal lineage, which is gradually uh, moved over to become the patriarchal lineage, okay? And in Chinese now, um, the, for this slide, you have to pay attention to the to the word seed. You know, if you're English speaker, seed, S E E D, seed. Okay, and in Chinese, this is uh, what we actually draw a little child, and the sound can be ji or ti. And I can actually also uh, this is the dictionary spelling, and this is what the normal Cantonese will uh, Cantonese will spell it like ji. Okay. And Z and C it should be just a very a subtle mutation in sound. It means the offspring, the fruit, and the seed of something. Of course, it means a child too. And then uh, later on, we have a more uh, definite word uh, means children or, or child. And it means it sound is zai, okay? Zai, anything small or young animal or child. And I will compare it uh, today, I will compare a Chinese. Uh, with Hebrew and also Arabic, you'll pay a lot of attention to the similar sound, okay? And Hebrew, they actually have a sound like this, da, okay? It means small, small little one or something insignificant, exactly the same way as we say ji on the other end of the world. And then uh, this is dai also means small, young, and little, or insignificant. And this is what I find in the Hebrew dictionary, both of it, you know, uh, the different spelling happen at the same time. So you can see that, you know, uh, the sound is made, but actually it really depends on how you want to transcribe it. Sometimes uh, what you think these are different alphabet, they can actually produce very similar sound. Okay, and I go back to the Chinese uh, side, and um, this is called za okay and remember this okay and then uh, I can also spell it this way and it actually means navel if you look up the Chinese dictionary but the thing that they don't uh, really uh, tell obviously is that it actually uh, talked about it from a female point of view and also you can see uh, this is a very obvious female on, on a crouching position which is the giving the position of giving birth okay
And、uh, this so-called nephew is actually counting from the female's brother's daughter. Okay, so as you can see, this is a remnant of the matriarchal、uh, society since very ancient time, as the Chinese history、uh, wrote down obviously that we were、um, matriarchal from the very very beginning. It's only become patriarchal later on in history. Okay, so the female symbol is very obvious there, and、um, I want to you to also pay attention to this Chinese writing and also this is Egyptian hieroglyph.、Uh, we. Actually, use the same、uh, kind of concept to express female and motherhood. Look, look at these. You know, they are actually very, very similar. And then、uh, I go back to the Hebrew to show you. This is what、uh, last time I showed you. This tit and actually means flower, or blossom, or the、uh, or a bloom. You know, of course, when the flower blooms, you know, it starts to produce seeds or, or it's, it's babies. Okay. And、um, in Chinese, actually,、uh, we repeat the same. Sound twice to re to to mean、uh, some kind of a. Puro, okay, and、uh, in ancient time, this is、uh, oracle bones more than three thousand five hundred years old. We can pronounce it as di di sun sun, and the other way, the other way of pronouncing it is di di zat zat. Can you hear the sound di di zat zat? This is di di, okay. And the first one in Chinese means simply the descendant. The other one actually is a wider scope. It actually di di zat zat actually means including all the sign lines, okay. Um, here I wrote it out for you. That means all sign lineage and relatives, including your nephew, your cousin, whatever they are, not just a direct descendant. So you can hear the sound ji ji ta ta, and this ji ji right there, and and now you see the Hebrew word ji ji. It actually means a floral, a lock of hair, and also fringe, a tassel. It didn't、uh, go directly to to tell you it's、uh, the um. The descendant, but then you can see this tie here is also means a small child, exactly as the tie here on this side in in the Cantonese pronunciation. And last time I show you, we have a, a word saying、uh, Guan Ji. Guan Ji is actually、uh, means the descendant from the Queen. Last week I also show you that this actually related to your English Queen there, and、uh, it gradually become a, a patriarchal、uh, meaning. And it means a aristocratic family, and of course that means that it has a royal lineage. And then、uh, whoever this Guan Ji are, you know, always carry a lineage marker, which is like this. And if you look at the Jewish world, you will see exactly the same. This is the belief that they be they are linked to the divine lineage. You know, they have a confidence with God. You know, that's why this is a way of showing. They wear this tit tit to show their lineage. You know, to 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 God and of course this is a modern、uh, thing that they wear.、Uh, if you don't want to wear this vest inside, you know the modern、uh, young people also wear something like this. This is exactly the same way you know to express your lineage th、um, from east and west. Okay. And then I want to show you the importance of hair, and 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 the hair that makes into textile, and textile make into fringes, and、um, actually uh, for. Uh, Thousands of years, this they are actually a symbol of lineage, and also because they split into many different lines, it is actually the symbol of multiplication, and also a symbol of a positive splitting. Okay, and that's、uh, I also、um, give you some images. You know the Arcadian world,、uh, all these gods, you know, and and high priests they were celebrating there, and you have, have、uh, can you see all those? You know the effort of putting in all these fringes they put on their clothes. And even until very modern time, you know, in the Arab world,、um, and to use the tassel, you know, it's only limited to a few, you know,、uh, aristocratic family. So、um, in Chinese, also, you know, all those、uh, lines that they carry also means, you know, they they belong to a distinguished family. And then all these Chinese words, you know, I will have to explain it in detail another day. But I want to see you, you know, how important it is that they use the, this. Hair to show, you know, descendants. Okay, and of course, you know, you understand this easily. You know, whenever you see this, is something posh, something very luxurious, right? Because in an ancient world, when all these animal hair are actually expensive product, and、uh, you cannot afford to waste this. 
to make into tassel if you have hair you have fiber you would rather you know make it into the textile to wear to keep you warm so only those who have extra to spare you know can have you know this effort to make all this to make all this into tassels to show their status you know in in, in the society so you will understand through this textile you know people show their the, the, the power there um, there is actually a very strong power in the color and the material because you know who can afford silk who can afford uh, the purple color which came from a very expensive dye so in ancient time all the color is coded all the material is coded not very um, not like us now uh, we are actually very mixed in that that's why we do not learn to read you know uh, these kind of codes in in, in material it's Itself. and and of course again you know I want you to pay attention more to uh, the textile because it shows one's economic political and personal status uh, all these signs shows you your position in maybe a position in the family and it may be a position in society and depends on what color you are you're in a certain category so all these were very very visual information in the ancient time it's very different from what we uh, our society are now now, okay and um, again uh, here I want to show you um, the spread out of our, our sound okay I use the first uh, slides words to show you this is Jai and Zi okay here the sound this is Jai in Za in Hebrew uh, Zai also in Hebrew all this means small or children or insignificant or flower or seed producing thing so you can just pay attention to the sound or this Zai Zi Zi okay and this that and once again I show you how closely uh, they were the Chinese and the hieroglyphs so um, you will really wonder whether there there was uh, communication already since ancient time and uh, as time went by the Chinese from this Jai it, we actually mutated into another word Sai can you hear Zai Sai okay and then um, and interestingly in uh, Arabic this is a word Sai uh, this is exactly means uh, the same thing like small and children this is Zai Sai Sai okay and this Zai so you will see that from from both sides you know from uh, if you put this in the middle you know both the Arab and the uh, Arabic and the Hebrew all share similar sound as time went by so there definitely has to be a lot of co continuously uh, communication between all these cultures and uh, in Greek uh, they, uh, when you talk about the seeds you know because these are all talking about gradually on um, uh, to the plant world it means seed too okay sitos actually means you know the, the wheat which becomes silico in in all in uh, Latin and I you have to pay attention to just the first syllable right there and it actually become what you know as seed of course every culture eat different kind of brain you know in in the in the Greek world you know they will understand it as the wheat you know so seed become a general seed okay and of course semen is, is also the seed but in the human world this is the seed of men right okay so um, this is human seed and then uh, if you look at the seed world and then I will show you in hieroglyph like this this is actually the same Chinese sign like this for us the Chinese in the dictionary ancient dictionary it explains it as grain but what kind of, of grain it explain it as rice okay so you will see that one world you know having the same sound explain it as a uh, wheat uh, for us the, the rice eater we actually explain it as rice so it it seems different but it's actually the same and this symbol you can see it right there we have the word sick or T okay sick or T and it's actually means exactly the same as this word in Georgian look at this this is Cantonese Chinese and this is Georgian this is sack and sick okay and and this actually means food and feet and and for Chinese it, it means exactly the same okay and as you can see this side is uh, the seed as in food that 
side is the seed as in human and then the saat is a German word for seed of course when you use it in general it can mean both you know the human side or the plant side okay now I draw up this triangle I want you to see uh, the hu uh, how sometimes you know you need a few words to understand the full uh, perspective uh, uh, I mean the, to have the full, full perspective you know in one language in this triangle I want to show you a Hebrew word you know uh, from this side of seed, you know, you have Sarah right there, um, at, which means seed, and then you have, you know, the um, the Hebrew word has a few words to uh, express the Z and the S sound. Okay, this is another sir. Okay, Sarah. Sarah actually means the um, extent to spread, to restrain, to sprawl, to grow luxuriously. This has to do, you know, uh, meaning something uh, of fertility, the growth of this seed, but it's closely related. This is Sarah, this is Sarah, okay? And what happened to this Sarah that you know as a person's name? Of course, this is the Sarah of the matriarch, and this is the matriarch of the whole Jewish line, you know, this uh, the, as they explain as the mother of nations so as you can see you can understand the full picture of this song you know for those uh, ancient uh, Jews who doesn't know how to read or write the song is the the, the, the main point okay the Sarah Sarah and Sarah they all sum up to mean the a luxurious growth of this woman right there so this is how you understand the ancient world okay so again if I go back in time you know the iron right there you can actually uh, go back to this uh, original uh, symbol in a very very early time this iron right there you can understood as the, as the pubic uh, area the pubic triangle right there uh, and many years ago in ancient Hebrew it was expressed like this like just like a hole or like an eye okay and then uh, in ancient um, Egyptian hieroglyph you will see that there is that hole right there with the flow right there again you know I have already explained that you can understood it from a patriarchal side of view it is like the sunlight you know the rays coming out or if you understand it from a matriarchal world you know you can understand it as a spring with water flowing out okay and I will show you this Chinese writing which is closely related to giving birth and motherhood can you see the uh, similarity between this mental concept between Chinese and ancient Egyptian hieroglyph but other than that I want to show you more because in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph this is actually a word that means human but look at the Chinese writing as, as this is just an eye and with the three line flowing out if you look at it they are actually exactly the same but what does it mean in Chinese and this actually means uh, human exactly the same as ancient Egyptian hieroglyph and um, the Egyptian um, Egyptologist said that it is it should be pronounced as this right with the her the, the line part and the men okay but how does Chinese sound it actually sound as man okay and if in German you can understand this as man or mensch and, but then in English, of course, you can understand this human and the man. And the human is actually linked, you know, the, this ancient lineage to the divine line. And uh, this is the ancient uh, obsession that we always want to link ourselves to God. Of course, gradually that privilege was taken over by only the royal family, not any, not the rest of us. Okay. And then. I also want, for out of this triangle, I also want you to pay attention to this. This also, if you go back to uh, thousands of years, then you will go back to the ancient Hebrew writing. This is actually uh, the real line. So this Sarah right here to grow uh, luxuriously, this is to uh, about fertility. This is also closely linked to this umbilical cord, the cord right there. And then if you look at Sarah, why in the Bible all of a sudden God changed 
change Sarah's name from Sarai and add an H there from Abram and become Abraham. Both of them got added an H sound right there because at this time, you know, both the light H, uh, light H, her, and then all the heavy H, her, it's also you get confused, you know, they use it interchangeably and this is actually become the, you know, the real uh, line, you know, of the Jewish line. And then uh, if you go back to thousands of years, this is the symbol that it's, it, it was, okay? This is like the hair, you know, hairy part, you know, of, of uh, the ancient goddess. This is in Sumerian and this is in Chinese. All of this either it has to do with the fiber, the hair itself, or it has to do with the female. So you will see that this idea is closely connect, connected to the ancient um, goddess um, that, you know, has the fertility meaning. So you will see that this whole triangle uh, of in Hebrew, you will understand why Sarah is named Sarah because, you know, it, she was given, you know, the role as the mother, the big mother of the whole Jewish line, okay? And again, again, you know, I want to repeat what I uh, talked about last week between Arabic and Chinese. Again, this is hut. This is hut in Chinese. Both means a control, a line, a, a boundary, and also an exo. All this has to do also with the, a, a, a bind, a tie. Okay, it has to do with the rope. And hut is also a line in Arabic, and height is a line in Chinese. Height is a line. It's the same as this. And then um, uh, half is uh, also behind and after in Arabic, and how is exactly the same behind and after. And Halifa is in Arabic is a successor, and and what you say is a caliph or caliphate, and this is the successor of Muhammad, the line his family, and this is uh, the Chinese meaning this descendant, but this goes to the S sound, okay? As I keep repeating, either it is an H sound or the S sound, okay? And then this is the Chinese word become uh, monopolized by the emperor who who boasts that he's the the lineage of the divine line so he is the son of God so he's holding that uh, line from from heaven so uh, you will see that it is always this S C or Z sound or either the H sound and this is a holder lineage and as I repeat again um, uh, always you know we combine we split it's always about you know this and if you look at it you know that's why you get the word Sunni and which is a lawful descendant and that's why you get the Shia. The Shia is actually someone also Thai adhere to Ali, who is also actually a member of it, uh, if not the direct, direct descendant. So all our human trouble all comes from our struggle, you know, for the uh, legitimate lineage. You know, this is basically our whole trouble in the whole world, okay? And... Um, Okay, let me go to the tribal lineage in the uh, Jewish world. And again, you know, this is the um, ancient Hebrew writing. This is the heavier age. This is the lighter age. And this is uh, the Chinese. Um, and from here, you will see that Hava actually holds the two. And this is the very, very important woman. This is the first woman ever. And this is mother of all living things. But then later, you know, she was, you know, a villifer fight and then you know gradually she lost her position but I want you to compare it with Chinese Chinese also have the, exactly the same we have the threat to have the heavier high and then we have the uh, very similar symbol uh, a lighter edge you know either it means the air itself or the uh, you can understand it as the wind blowing on the hair okay so it's basically coming from the same concept and then um within the jewish line you will see that a lot of trouble going on you know and then they, they were uh, uh, uh abandoned and then they were they were they were no longer in eden so until uh, all this line were very mixed until noah came along and why noah and because noah is actually 
actually the last man that holds that line and he's supposed to be the man who carry on this so I show you this because to show you how important the H sound in H symbol is in the ancient time so this is back to Sumerian this is hush hush you will see that this is still the female part this is the split from the female womb that comes out you know and interestingly uh, in the vulgar vulgar Cantonese word we will uh, describe the female part as high okay um, this word um, you don't normally hear a female saying it you know as I say it now high is actually uh, the street people saying it very dirtily to describe the female part but it's actually a very ancient word uh, linking to the female um, part that is actually uh, coming the origin of this so-called thread okay and and I now go back to Hebrew. This is uh, uh, Yahash. Yahash is actually means, you know, a uh ways a family line again you know the attention is to the second part and if you pay attention you know they are actually side by side from uh, from the ancient Sumerian so we do adopt from each other so no one actually go out and invent new words all these words came down from very very ancient time and of course you know this has to raise the family line actually uh, uh, become you know carry on from Noah because supposedly all the others were killed from Noah, you know, the line spread again, it become, you know, the three sons right there. And then, of course, you know, one of the sons, you know, still carry on that thread right there. But interestingly, uh, the Jewish world, uh, the Sam become very, very important. We no longer pay attention to Ham, though. Uh, but I want you to continue on this, you know, a lot of things go on. I want you to pay attention to two very important characters. One is Sarah, the other one is Abraham. Again, of course, you know, Sarah was changed, you know, with that line added on to him, and then Abraham added on to him, but then, then, uh, sorry, sometimes I say him, you know, uh, because in Chinese we don't have he or she. Sometimes I got mixed up, okay? So uh, in Genesis, uh, uh, the, the, it was he, I mean, uh, Sarah was described as the mother of nations. And of course, you know, from, he, from her, from her actually it comes down, you know, the Yehud. Yehud become what you know as Jews, you know. You see this H keep carrying on from that. And then um, if you uh, look at the Jewish world, these three uh, words combined together actually means the family word in Jewish uh, and it actually means the spread and extension. It also means the maid servant. Why? Because in ancient time they actually catch the maid servant um, to help producing children. And of course if you look read the Bible you will know that Aga, Aga actually is from Egypt and then uh, with, with, with Abraham they produce different different family. But why we don't pay attention? Attention to them because all, all attention only paid to Yehud because in this uh, whole Bible and the and it only pay attention to the Yehud okay so thank you for watching I will continue